You're listening to the CD Baby. CD Baby. CD Baby DIY Musician Podcast. Hey there, and welcome to episode number 120 of the CD Baby DIY Musician Podcast. My name is Kevin, and joining me for this roundtable edition is The Bolt and Chris. Hello. Hey. Good to be back. I know. Yeah, for 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 the the diehard listeners, it's it's been a little while. For those of you who just discovered us in iTunes last week, we're here with another episode. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it feels like it's been a year. I don't know if it's been that long, but it feels. It's been a while. Things have happened. Yes. In our lives, uh, Chris is um, in a different Portland. That, that's right. I am. That's right. Uh, so yeah, we're we're just. All over the place, life changes, but we're back. Um, I lost myself, I found myself, I lost myself again. Yep. But anyway, so yeah, we've got uh, uh, quite a few episodes lined up for you. We can, basically what happened is, you know, the show just got re-upped. We were in negotiations for a while, they finally (laughs) re-upped the show, so we're back. (laughs) Right. (laughs) The Um, bad news is that there was a writer's strike during that time, and so we have no new material for you. Yeah, Yeah. exactly. (laughs) Exactly. We actually had numerous failed attempts of recording new episodes, but we're back, and we have other episodes in the can, ready to go, and uh, lots of exciting stuff uh, um, to have on the, the DIY Musician Podcast, so enough of that let's get to it all right we're gonna start out with some news headlines well it's been an exciting couple weeks here at cd baby with the official launch of cd baby pro a new service to help independent artists collect worldwide publishing royalties for their original music the idea is simple artists should be paid all the available revenue for their music cd baby pro will affiliate you as a songwriter with ascap or bmi the two main performing rights organizations in the u.s Get your songs registered with collection agencies around the world and collect all available publishing royalties on your behalf, including mechanical and performance royalties. We have a lot more in store for you concerning CD Baby Pro, but in the meantime, head on over to cdbaby.net slash pro and check it out. And that's just for U.S. artists right now. Yes, U.S. only. Pandora recently announced that it now has 200 million registered users in the U.S., Last month, Pandora said it played more than 100,000 unique artists and more than 1 million unique songs, making it an increasingly important revenue stream for artists. But it's a source of income that Pandora says it needs to cut in order, to, in order for the company to become profitable. So how did you celebrate World Intellectual Property Day? The top folks over at the U.S. Copyright Office gathered to urge members of Congress to overhaul current copyright law and usher in the next great copyright act. As mentioned, the address was delivered on the anniversary of World Intellectual Property Day at the Library of Congress, and this should help speed the movement towards a new version of the U.S. Copyright Act that uh, will help address some gray areas left by the Digital Millennium Copyright Act and accommodate new copyright issues brought on by the digital revolution. And those were some of the main headlines I saw that were hanging out there that were of notes worthy of discussion first off we have well, to, we have to talk about cd baby pro before we do though what was the actual date of world intellectual property day i don't know but apparently because how do on i my know account. what i was doing on that day i don't know <laughs> <laughs> this is concerning to me <laughs> Every... i like to think i was celebrating it somehow but yeah I, sure. I, I wasn't celebrating it i know that much <laughs> my family chooses not to celebrate <laughs> World Intellectual Property Day. <laughs> it's just a personal choice. Um, yeah, so uh, we'll get to that in a second. But CD Baby Pro, which kind of all plays, a lot of these are all very royalty centric. Um, and as you know, we've discussed on the podcast and and uh, a lot of exciting developments in the music industry, a lot of new revenue streams and things that have kind of been gray areas that people are trying to solidify. And with CD Baby Pro, where you know, we're helping artists collect royalties that were otherwise going uncollected. So it's pretty exciting. I've been excited about it as an artist myself. Yeah, I know. I just uh, opted in my album actually the other day. The, uh, the you know, the basics are that, you know, anytime your music gets used in like radio, TV, internet streaming, um, on uh 
You're really selling this new service. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever your music is purchased digitally overseas. Yeah, so foreign mechanicals, domestic mechanical royalties from streaming services like Spotify. Um, the thing is, most artists are mistaken to believe that if they've affiliated with ASCAP or BMI that they're covered for all this stuff, which isn't true. Um, that's just a piece of the puzzle. Um, so what we're doing is helping them represent the publishing side of their music. And even if, even if artists have set up their own publishing company, there's still a lot of aspects of this that they're not tapping into, um, like the foreign mechanical royalties that are just royalties that are just sitting there. If you have sales in foreign territories, those territories are supposed to pay out those royalties. Uh, those retailers in those territories are supposed to pay out those royalties, but they don't know who you are, and they'll only work with publishing companies. So. That's 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 a big key piece to this. Yeah, and a lot of it, I think, is also educating artists. I feel like a lot of artists don't understand that these royalties are available for them to collect, and it is a very complicated sort of uh, diluted field where it, it's really easy to get confused or discouraged, and CD Baby Pro sort of just does everything for you. We go out and collect all the royalties international and uh, as well as um, in the U.S., and just makes it really easy for artists to to know and feel confident that they're getting all the royalties that um, they're owed for the use of their music. Yeah, and uh, kind of playing into the, the the subject of our discussion in just a bit, um, the the thing that I was so excited about when we were developing this is that you know I've got uh, an older album, independent album that gets a lot of uh, usage both online and through some placements. And every time I'd go to the ASCAP website to properly register the song, I would just be like, oh, this takes forever and I don't want to do it. And it's a pain in the butt. And this takes makes that process super easy. And, you know, it's just a matter of making sure you're set up to, to capitalize on what you're doing with your music. And and to me, the, the value of it was right there. I'm like, I don't want to mess with this. Yeah. Just somebody do it for me. So it was such that process is such a pain that I haven't even registered my my latest album was not, it's kind of old now it came out like two and a half years ago I still haven't registered those songs because it's such a pain yeah so with this now I just press a couple buttons and it's all done for me and you can you know since you work here you can act you can get paid while you're doing it yeah uh, yeah good point it's like uh, it's, product development testing yeah research <laughs> right so yeah so that's that's a new thing we're doing you'll hear more about that we've got some episodes dedicated to kind of um unpacking the whole publishing music publishing idea there's a lot of confusion around it and it's it it's confusing but there's so much money in that area and that's kind of where the the big money is in music so it's important that artists understand and and we'll have more on that soon um you know the pandora th the struggle and the the whole copyright act they uh, they kind of go hand in hand um Pandora's, you know, kind of bragging here about how many users they have, how many artists are getting played, and they don't, I don't think they listed any amount of royalties they're paying, but the idea that, you know, there's a lot of action happening here, but we need to pay artists less. Yeah. <laughs> it's always the uh, artist. <laughs> who get the short end of the stick yeah. on, on, in the name of business. Yes. Yes. If they, if they announced they were going to pay the IT crowd less, I mean... They would cease to exist, right. but, you know, ah, screw the artists. I'm always, like, on the one hand, because I have some acquaintances that work at Pandora, I'm always pretty sympathetic, and I want them to succeed because I like these people that, that work there. And then on the other hand, I'm like, wait, your business model is you can't abide. You're failing, essentially, because you can't pay artists what the law says they're supposed to be paid. Well, maybe you don't deserve to be a business. That's true. That's true. So I don't know if that's... Uh, that's a harsh statement, but or yeah. if the laws need to be changed, either way. But well, and that's and that's what uh, you know the, the copyright office is trying to actually get underway. I know it's been piece little pieces of you know copyright issues have been dealt with in Congress recently, but uh, there's there's a growing movement to actually get a complete overhaul of the copyright law that uh, would address a lot of these things. And, and really to accommodate a lot of the new revenue streams that digital services are providing and really put some clarity on some issues that uh, have kind of been hanging out there. And some of that would directly relate to Pandora. So 
Um, it sounds like there's some momentum building. It's I would assume it's still years off, but um, it's it's probably something that's going to be more and more in the headlines as they move to to make that a reality. Yeah, I mean, I feel like Pandora, you know, it's struggling in the same way that s social networks are struggling. Making a profitable um, business out of something that's free for users is like a problem that not just Pandora has, but like almost every internet company that starts out with a freemium model. Um, right. And uh, it may not just be the music industry. It may be that, you know, businesses just need to get better at monetizing their services. <laughs> they just need to sell to Google because when you when Google buys you, suddenly all your problems go away. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, all right. Well, that's the news. And there's so many cool things happening and interesting things happening um, that uh, there'll be some great headlines coming up. So today we wanted to have a little discussion. I believe we were just, the three of us were sitting around chatting. Yeah. Yeah, when he came and, up with the subject. And and Bolton, you just threw out this this line that I thought, hey, that's a good idea. We should discuss that. Um, and it was, are you prepared to go viral? And uh, the interesting thing is here at CD Baby, we see a lot of artists who will just be, you know, cruising along. And then suddenly they do something. A lot of times it's a video. And all this attention will be drawn to them. And... Many times we see artists aren't even prepared for that attention. And, and so kind of the scenario is you come up with the perfect idea, whether it be a video or a song, blog post or something else that suddenly makes you go viral. And then the problem is there was no groundwork done to capitalize on the sudden burst of success. Right. So the question is, what do you need to do to make sure that if something goes big, you're not left scrambling to play catch up? And we're not talking about, you know, like a record deal or something like that. We're talking about internet something viral artists have you know again videos or even just a song suddenly becomes very timely to current events and starts getting shared and the artist is kind of you know left yeah I, don't, I could be some very simple stuff like not um not having a link on your youtube video to where people can buy you know the, your song um to some more complicated um stuff like um you know making sure that you're set up to get paid royalties from streaming services and youtube and um you know that you're distributed internationally it's there's sort of a wide breadth of things to talk about and we all sort of i believe we all sort of have our own takes on it for today yeah yeah i mean so i think we should uh, start out with the basics i mean uh rob lee were you gonna chris I don't know. If, I don't know if our audience knows you at Robley. Now they do. So, uh, not not the bolt. Not the bolt. That's how we. That's how here in the office we separate the two. <laughs> Otherwise, you know, two Chris's. We now have two Tracys. I mean, it's just madness. So, <laughs> um, so yeah. I don't. I don't know if uh, you. What we what you were going to mention some of the just some of the basics. Yeah, I was going to talk about uh, distribution and and just simply having your music available to buy uh, and. One uh, of the examples I think probably all of us have thought of is Rebecca Black. She had that song, It's Friday, Friday, Gotta Get Down on Friday, uh, which was this viral YouTube thing. And I think we were all sitting in the office one morning when it still had like 60, 70, 80,000 views or something. And we're realizing, whoa, this thing is catching on. I think later that day it almost had a million views. Or I, c I can't remember the stats exactly, but... We were all thrilled, and then we looked, and we're like, oh, my God, she's a CD Baby artist, um, which was, you know, either well-timed or she just was prepared. She was ready to go viral. So she had her music uh, available through CD Baby, which meant it's uh, you could buy it on iTunes. You could buy it on Amazon. You could buy it on, listen to it on Spotify. It's available all over the world, and that's just a, kind of a no-brainer thing. Uh, you never know where, when, and how something's going to take off. Uh, you could all of a sudden find that one of your videos resonates in, in Portugal or in Germany or whatever. So you got to have your music available for those people that are going to, um, you know, be stoking the fires of the hype machine. And um, that was the one thing I was going to say. Um, <laughs> but that, 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 one, was... <laughs> that one, you know, is an important example because it's amazing how many artists I'm coming across these days that are like, 
I'm just going to sell my music here or there. And, and if you do have something take off, it's really important that you're everywhere. So people can access you from however they like to enjoy music, you know? Right. Right. And I, I, I tell the artists all the time that, you know, it's a worldwide, uh, music culture these days I mean, people enjoy music around the world and some places they want a cd some places they want to use itunes some places itunes isn't even available so the, yeah, right. the idea of just being on itunes will cover you is is kind of a misnomer as well and so you know the idea of everything you're doing so many artists are trying to promote themselves and get success but then if it's like if something does hit they're missing out by not having their music available. Well, and you have yeah. you have these sort of um, these sort of content systems that people are locked into. Like if you're an Apple person and you buy, you might buy all your music from iTunes. But if you're a um, Amazon, you know, um, subscriber, you might buy all your music from Amazon um, or Google Play. And I think that um, people get really comfortable buying music a certain way, and they're sort of hesitant to go and do it other ways. So, if giving giving people as many options as possible ensures that you're not excluding anyone, um, and uh, and getting you know maximum sales. Yeah. And definitely uh, not uh, not even uh, just exclusive to the digital realm. Like I think the UK, almost fifty percent of their music sales now is is digital, but in a lot of countries, it's still you know, 70, 80, 90% CDs. So having a variety of formats and uh, making sure you've got a retail solution set up either through your own website or through a service like CD Baby where we can ship CDs as well. Yeah, and the, the interesting Important. thing about Rebecca Black and, and the, the idea of going viral altogether is that, you know, it's going to be a big explosion and then it goes away. And so that's the idea of like, are you prepared to go viral uh, with Re someone like Rebecca Black? Um, she has made a considerable amount of money just off of the downloads of that song. And we can see if, if, what the exact number is because we do her distribution. And uh, um, so it's more than what many artists make it being on a major label with some success <laughs> <laughs> being but, independent can really pay. But, uh, so anyway, the idea of that, you know, going viral, it's going to be this explosion that you're going to capitalize on. And if you don't, if you're not, you know, properly set up, that's just not, you're not going to get that back. Fortunately for someone like Rebecca, her video is, you know, about a specific day of the week. And so every Friday she kind of has, this little resurgence of views yeah. as it gets passed around again. People want to hear it. But, you know, for most artists, whether it be like um, Walk Off the Earth, where they're all playing, you know, that song, that Gautier song with on one guitar, um, that went crazy viral for them and kind of boosted their career. But now it's been done. Everyone else is doing that. So eventually that, that kind of viral video is going to lose steam and not produce like it did in the past so you just got to be prepared to take advantage of that and and definitely making sure you're available you know where people can buy and actually pay you for it is even better yeah and there's all sorts of levels of of going viral i mean we're talking about some of the largest art um sort of examples of uh music videos going viral but um you know anytime you expand beyond your normal fan reach um, and reach audiences outside of um, outside of your friends and fans. Um, you're basically going viral. That sharing of your um, content that sort of happens on any sort of exponential level is a little bit of going viral, and that's why you need to be prepared. Is so that when you do have that one hit, you know that one video, that one song, that one blog post or image that gets passed around a ton that you really take advantage of um, that situation. All right. So this is for the bolt. Nothing frustrates me more than when somebody passes me a link or something to a band I hadn't heard of. I like it. And then I go and search for them online and I can't find any information about them. Yeah. So I know you had some, 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 checklist items around that topic it's amazing how many artists 
still don't have a website beyond Facebook or don't have any relevant information about what they're doing, even while they're having some success. It's, yeah. It blows my mind. Uh, a lot of a lot of artists um, will just, you know, throw up a Facebook page or a Bandcamp page or something like that with, uh, you know, some links to their social network site and call it good. Um, and there's a lot of reasons why that can hurt you. Um, we actually experienced this firsthand recently when um, uh, Brad, who works in the marketing department, saw a couple of um, music reviewers actually complaining on Twitter about how when they're looking for bands to write about them, that they can't find actual websites that have the information that they need. And this is very common where like a reviewer, a booker, an editor, like they look for your information because they want to help out your career and the information is not there. And a lot of times that means you get passed up and you don't have, um, you know, you don't have that opportunity. I know that if I saw a viral video I would be very, and I've done this before, you know, like I type in the band name out and I want to know things about them. I want to know like, you know, how they became the band that they are, like how they made the video, um, you know, if they have albums for sale. Like I actually, if something really grabs me, like I want to know all sorts of things about them. And the same thing goes with journalists and editors and, you know, record label execs and all those people that, um, you know, would be uh, interested in, in the origins of a viral video. Yeah. And, you know, I think something you kind of mentioned in there that I, I'm always interested when I see a viral video is when the idea behind it or, you know, the experience that they're going through as this kind of instant success is happening and kind of the story behind it. I mean, you know, obviously you may do a video where you weren't like, expecting it to go viral because most of it is unexpected but um but once something starts happening even if it's on a smaller scale starting to make reference to that on your site or kind of build a story around that is always sure. helpful I, the there's a an artist i forget his last name his name's dave but he did the united breaks guitars uh video and he just did that kind of because he told united he was going to do it but he would he did it mainly because he wanted to, you know, just verbalize and make a, you know, video. Vent. Of, <laughs> yeah, vent about his broken guitar, which, uh, Chris, you now have a broken guitar thanks to United. United still breaks guitars. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you wrote a blog post about that. but I did. It's on the DIY Musician blog if anyone wants to hear the horror stories about United uh, cracking my guitar on route to Toronto. Yeah, so anyway, they... They uh, broke uh, this guy's guitar. He makes a video. He wasn't expecting anything really from it, but then suddenly the press is calling him like, not like the very next day, and and it didn't not that many views into uh, the video, and uh, it was only like ten thousand or something like that. But anyway, it started building this story, and so all these people started searching for information about the story behind the video. Right, and so right. he fortunately capitalized on it quite well and and now he's got a full-time uh or part or a big part of what he's doing is a uh, speaking about the whole experience and he's able to play music and and make a decent living and it's it was just kind of an interesting if you look him up how he capitalized on a viral video and and kind of laid a foundation for future success with it yeah that's always like the, the thing that i'm most interested in is seeing how people respond to uh, what's happening in response to their video and how they can parlay it into the next thing or, um, you know, watching to see if they're prepared to go viral is almost as exciting as the thing that's making them go viral. Yeah. That makes any sense. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. For sure. I do have a list here of, um, some things as far as, um, I think, you know, having your own website is, is number one, but having the right sort of content on your website, um, is, is also very important. So I'll go through these things really quickly. Um, first, you want your own domain name. Um, and you want your own domain name, you know, www.yourbandname.com. You want it to be your band name. You don't want it to be an abbreviation. You want it to be something that someone would type into a search engine to find you. Um, and then once you have that domain name and you have a website, you want to make sure that you have, like, a really good bio. Um, you have song samples, uh, press kit, 
album reviews, lyrics. Um, you want to make sure that you have either a store right on your site or um, some really obvious links where people can buy your music. Um, this goes along with having a press kit, but you want to have high res photos. If someone wants to write about you, they're going to need a high res photo to put in the article. Um, you want uh, ways for people to be able to contact you, obviously, email, phone numbers, stuff like that. Um, and you also want share buttons so that if somebody does, you know, like your video and hopefully you've embedded that video on your website, um, they can share it, easily share it on their social networks and, um, with their friends. And, uh, and yeah, I think that a blog is really important. You don't have to, you know, write a blog post every day, but having a blog makes it easy for people to weigh in and comment. And if something did go viral, you could start posting about the experience as Kevin was suggesting. Yeah, definitely. The thing I'd notice most bands, most maybe uh, kind of young bands don't have is uh, a way to collect email addresses and build their newsletter. Oh, right. Yeah. I forgot it about that like one. seems like a pretty common mistake. Yeah. I mean, definitely, especially, I mean, if you're going viral and you have thousands of people visiting your website, um, some of those people might just visit your website and never come back again. It's the one chance you have of actually engaging with them. If you can get them on your email list, even better, because you can start building a relationship with them from there. Mm. Kind of uh, shifting gears a little bit. Uh, I think probably the most frustrating thing that we see bands deal with as far as like uh, going viral um, and they kind of discover on the, the back end is is, you know, finding out they're not really set up to capture revenue off of any of this stuff. Um, you know, if if they're signed up, you know, with CD Baby, we have them on iTunes that, and all the other stores and our site, you know, it's it's pretty easy to go, okay, I'm good there, even though some artists still don't do that. Um, but the beyond that, you know, specifically with YouTube and and some of the other things that are out there, uh, you know, artists, we've, we've had it happen a lot where they contact us and they're trying to figure out how they can capitalize and, and recapture some revenue that, uh, you know, they, they weren't signed up with affiliated with a PRO. So they're losing all performance royalties and, and they're not signed up. Uh, they don't have anyone representing their music for like mechanicals and stuff like that. So that's one thing that, you know, like we were talking about CD baby pro, I think is a cool feature for artists you know just your setup and if something happens you're going to get the money so well, so how's it work if a video goes viral do i get paid every single time someone watches it if i'm set up correctly uh well there's there's a couple things there's performance royalties that are generated by the you know the plane of the video and there's the songwriter portion of that and the publisher portion of that where most artists miss out is that they might have affiliated as a songwriter. A lot of artists think that covers them, but then they're still not registered their song. So even if their song goes crazy viral in a video, nobody knows it's theirs. Right. So you've signed up to ASCAP or BMI, but you the ASCAP or BMI doesn't know this is your song, basically. So yeah, yeah. And so getting all that handled properly, and then uh, there's also uh, ad revenue share for. Um, you know, the, the whole content ID program. So uh, that's something, you know, what, we're doing with our sync licensing program, making sure that artists are getting that money for their videos. And not just their own videos, but any video on YouTube that uses their music. Yeah, yeah, because so. that, I mean, that's a good point because it could be that your song gets used in something that you didn't create that goes viral. And right. um, it's not a matter of, well, you know, I'm not making videos. My band doesn't really make videos. But you could have a fan that, you know, does something. I don't know. What's the latest craze now? I mean, there was planking for a while. Then there was something else. And uh, uh, <laughs> I think the mo one of the more recent things is uh, Ah You Can. The, uh, the, the people who take pictures of themselves like they're video game fighters. See? <laughs> Wow. I missed out on this one. <laughs> wow. <laughs> People on the internet have some free time. But so I mean it could be something like that where one of your fans does something that's a part of like the latest meme or the latest, you know, kind of internet craze and puts your song to it and it goes crazy viral and and of course that art that that fans 
doesn't know about any of this stuff and isn't going to make sure that, hey, let me make sure this music is all taken care of so they get all their money. I, I mean, think, and so it's those opportunities happen as well that something else could go viral that you get attached to. I think you just outlined the very best way to go viral is is for someone else to make you go viral. Yeah. So if you can encourage that to happen, um, it's less work and more money. <laughs> <laughs> and that's why we got into music in the first place. <laughs> Yeah, it is. It is a, a something that fans. I mean, artists should be encouraging their fans to do more than they than I see happening. Is like use our songs in your videos. Go make the craziest video. We'll have a contest, the wackiest video, or jump on some sort of uh, meme that internet meme that's happening at the time. Do everyone make a video like this and um, and put use our song. The winner gets a prize and. You know, if you get a lot of those videos being created, that can start adding up to some serious plays and some serious money that uh, is a nice supplement to, uh, you know, your sales and everything else. But I don't see people doing it all that often. So go do it. <laughs> Video contests. So what else do we got? Anything else? Um, I just was thinking my friend... Uh... Uh, my housemate actually um, was in a band um, that was called Euro Motion. They're sort of a jokey band that um, pretended they were from the future and they'd come to the past to steal dance moves. And uh, they became kind of a college underground YouTube hit. And people made all these um, sort of fan videos like um like spent tons of time like making these like videos where they acted out the lyrics of the songs and wore costumes and they used the actual music um he my housemate doesn't do the band anymore but he just always thought it was kind of amusing that he had basically gone viral that his songs were there's like college kids in different towns all over the country but he never you know he never took the time to actually get signed up with ASCAP or BMI so um, and I don't know if he will. I've tried to encourage him before, but he, he's just, not super just motivated. Get him on CD Baby Pro, man. CD, CD Baby, Baby Pro is the answer. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> so sh should we do like a, a, a checklist and review? Sure, sure. It'd be uh, have worldwide distribution of multiple formats yes. for your music. And, uh, and, and, and sign up for your uh, sync licensing program so you can make money off of YouTube. Right, which is different from the CD Baby Pro. It's it's actually something we offer for free when you sign up with CD Baby. Yeah. What else? Have a website. Yeah. Collect people's email addresses. And and when you know something starts hitting, understand it's going to come and go fast. And so you gotta you know kind of have a good foundation built, like with the website especially, because if anything happens. The first thing people are going to do is start searching for who you are, especially if it's directly related to you as an artist. If it's like something, a piece of content you created, whether a video, a song, a blog post, some image, anything, um, they're going to start searching for you. And if they find nothing, you're just not going to capitalize on it. Now, if it's an, another piece of content that someone else creates, then, you know, it's just a matter of you still need that good foundation, but you may not be able to react the same way because you may not know about it until it's you know already coming and, and, and we've talked about this before but having a good story that's reflected on your website in your bio is so important because that's going to be the difference between people really connecting uh, all the way through from the viral content to you as an artist and wanting to really share that and identify and connect because that's you know that's what go viral stories go viral so if if you can paint the whole picture and in a in an intriguing and entertaining way, um, you'll have a lot more opportunity for success. Now we just need to figure out how you actually go viral. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> Which you can find like a bazillion articles online. This is how you actually go viral. But yeah. I, don't, it's, I don't know. It's, we, we have two of those articles, but they both start with the sentence, we don't know. We don't know. <laughs> <laughs> we fooled you. We got you to read our article. Yeah. Well, the the problem is you can't do what someone else has done before, so you have to do something new. Like yep. you know, lay out in the yard and video yourself laying there. Yeah. 
<laughs> Naked. Thrilling. Thrilling. Somehow it, <laughs> everyone else on the planet will follow along. <laughs> All right. Well, um, we do have an email address where people can email us. If you've had any sort of viral success, we'd love to hear about it, hear your story, what happened, how you capitalized on it, how you missed the boat in some areas, and maybe some advice you'd have some other artists if, uh, you know, kind of reflecting on your experience of going viral. Um, you can email us at podcast at cdbabypodcast.com. And we have a listener line. Um, someone might want to check and make sure that's still and working. make sure that's still working. <laughs> <laughs> it's 360-524-2209. And uh, you can call. And if that doesn't work, I guess we'll find another number for next podcast. Yeah, that's right. I'll just give him your cell phone number. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) But yeah, and uh, you know, call those or email us there with any comments, questions that uh, maybe you'd like addressed on the podcast. But uh, would especially like to hear from artists if you've had any sort of viral success to hear from from you about that and uh, tell us your story. But you know, for anything else. Relating to CD Baby, there's another email for that. We occasionally get the random person that's, you know, emails us there. It's kind of odd. When's my song going to be on yeah, iTunes? Yeah, yeah. If you email that to that email address. <laughs> you might not get an answer. <laughs> yeah, you might. <laughs> but because we don't know. <laughs> <laughs> soon. 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 The answer is yeah. always soon. Um, cool. So it's nice to be podcasting again. More episodes on the way. In fact, I'm recording another one tomorrow. Excellent. It feels great to be back in the saddle. Yeah, and we're using all this fancy technology to make it happen. Yeah, it took us a while to figure out how to get uh, Chris in in Portland, Maine, um, recorded uh, along with us in Portland, Oregon. Yeah, yeah. We can see each other. It's like we're all in the same room. I know, I know. It's it's amazing. We just can't hug. That's the only problem. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll come out there in a month and we can... There we go. Maybe we can record like 20 episodes in a week. There totally. we go. Sounds Excellent. good. All right, cool. Well, that's going to do it. Uh, we'll catch you next time. Adios. Peace. You, 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 you've been listening to the CD Baby DIY Musician Podcast, broadcasting from Portland, Oregon, USA.